Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 3. Castle Sweet Castle. This episode was an okay episode. It was, I was like, huh, I'm enjoying it. There's good parts, but it's just there. <laughs> and the characters are well written and everything. You know, they're in character. It's just, it doesn't feel like they're actually doing anything. <laughs> I know they're decorating the inside of Twilight's castle because she doesn't feel like it's home and stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I think the issue was we spent so much time focusing on those five trying to figure out how to decorate the castle when the real issue was more the glimpses that we had with Twilight and Spike. You know, we didn't really have that huge transition for her when she moved to Ponyville we didn't have that whole loss of home moving to a new place you know strange is different even though it's nice it's not the same so I think this episode was really more about dealing with Twilight's sense of loss and losing the Golden Oak Library and accepting not just what the castle represents but accepting that it can be a place that can become home. Mm. I think another thing is it was um, the way the story points hit, I kind of predicted all of them. The only thing that I didn't really predict was uh, Spike being well written in this episode. Ba -dum -tsh, okay. <laughs> it does happen on occasion, and I love his little rarity plushie. <laughs> yeah, when my friends all saw that, they went, Rarity plushie, cannon! <laughs> uh, yeah, and. I really liked Pinkie Pie's moments, really, hiding confetti cannons. Them being well hidden isn't my fault. I mean, you hid them, Pinkie. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely your fault, that you hid them so well. Uh, I, I mean, you can randomly find your emergency supply of toys, balls, and other things around town, but you can't figure out where you hid your cannons. <laughs> oh well, it's Pinkie. <laughs> But yeah, there was a lot of nice little things going on in this episode anyways, but you know, overall it was eh. But there are some nice things like characterizations, like Rainbow Dash when Rarity goes, well, you had your trophies in here too, and she goes, touche. I have a feeling in the first season there would have been an argument between those two instead of just Rainbow Dash accepting that, yeah, I did it too. <laughs> yeah, as I think you're right that it would have been an argument the first time, and they were oh so politely arguing. It's like, okay, you guys have known each other for a while. Wouldn't you have taken a few minutes to come up with a game plan together instead of all running back to your houses, picking out your favorite things and bringing them back? I mean, there's nothing wrong with something being secondhand, but if you're decorating Twilight's place, I wouldn't have thought to run back to my house. I would have thought to run to a store. Yeah, I would have thought to run to a library. <laughs> Assuming there was another one. So hopefully a bookstore. Yeah, I would also have run out to the forest and gotten trees and wood and stuff like that. And I would have started putting wood paneling up to give it more of a warm, homely feel. Because as Pinky pointed out, it's large, open, cold, and all made of stone. <laughs> yes, so giving it a more homey feeling would have been nice. Wood paneling would have been nice, but what it really needed was books. I mean, even when they were talking at the end, when they were having the epiphany of, oh, yeah, this is what we did wrong. Almost everything they mentioned related to books. I do like the touch of the chandelier being made out of the roots of the Golden Oaks Library. Though, what Applejack said of, remind you where you came from, I'm like, she came from Canterlot. So the only thing I could really remind her of where she came from is... Unicorn versus Alicorn. It was a nice touch that there were actual memories in the jewels. I'd love to know how you pull that off. They might just be um visual imprints on it, not actual memories. Also, there's 94 of them, and this is episode 94. Nice touch. Nice. I didn't actually mean like their playback of the memories, but how did you get the image to show up on the jewel? You guys didn't have that much time. Rarity? Most likely as the only unicorn left involved in the decorating. And going back to their first song, um, considering Rainbow Dash's reaction in season four to the concept of musicals and, you know, people just randomly bursting into song, 
Why was she the first one to start singing? Also, this is our second song of the season so far. So we're already getting into more songs in the episode, so I wonder if this will continue. Will we have another song in next week's episode, or are we not going to? I don't know. Kind of interesting. And I thought the song was, okay, I enjoyed it. Yes. <laughs> And they do tend to go a bit back and forth. Sometimes we have several episodes in a row with songs, and then we have several without. But if they're still having the same issue of they don't know what order the episodes are actually going to air in, which seems less likely now that the chandelier had 94 crystals, and um, Snowflake working at the spa? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the scenes I laughed at. Poor Spike. And actually, speaking of the spa, I like Twilight's new mane. I think we should actually change up the girls' hairstyles. It would be kind of nice. You know, we've been at this for five seasons. I wouldn't mind a change like that. Yeah, um, that style had her mane going several different directions. It looked more like it was midway through a process, not a final hairstyle. Though I was kind of expecting at the end of it she would actually have a different hairstyle. But there's not much to be gained in terms of toy line by changing their hairstyles because the majority of the toys have brushable hair, which doesn't coincide with the styles. It's only the cast toys, you know, that are fully vinyl, plastic, etc., that have definitive hairstyles. Hmm. But yeah, they could do it though. Well, of course they could. I'm just saying there's no profitability to the toy line by doing so, and it doesn't really impact the story, therefore. And poor Spike walking out there. They, I like how they showed him all distorted as he was walking. It was like, ugh, ugh. That was a very serious massage, apparently. Though I do like the moment that comes up right after that, when they walk up to the um, remains of the Golden Oaks Library. Oh, yeah. And like I was saying, those moments, you know, when Twilight and Spike talking about the loss and the acceptance and moving forward, that's kind of more where the meat of the story could have been. Is that's also an important lesson. You know, it was brushed over in the series opener of moving to a strange new town, but a move is one of the things kids often have to deal with, and it's something they have no control over. Just like Twilight had no control over the fact that the library got wrecked. Though, that did make me think of the fact that, wait a minute, they dug up the Golden Oaks Library, so now there's a giant hole in town? <laughs> Someone should put some signs up saying, HOLE, WATCH OUT! They probably filled it back in with dirt. And besides, it was already kind of dangerous, you know, remains of a um, destroyed building. Mm-hmm. Have any more thoughts? Not too much, other than, okay, everyone brought what they would want in their homes, but Fluttershy brought living animals. That's basically inviting someone else to live in someone else's house. You, you really don't have the authority to do that? Although that does remind me of the fact that I kind of predicted it while I was watching the episode is the fact that everyone ended up decorating one other room. Like Rarity got the dining room, Applejack uh, got the kitchen. Though that would also be a dug of Pinkie Pie, but she just needs to get rid of the rest of those cannons. What was kind of funny is Rainbow Dash decorated the library. Hmm. Twilight's rubbing off on her. <laughs> well, yes. Recall how obsessed she is with the Daring Do books. And a library is a reasonable place to put posters. Like that wonderful Mega Tokyo poster. <laughs> yes. For those not familiar with it, Mega Tokyo is an awesome webcomic. And a few years back, they did a American Library Association read poster, which I happen to have. Yes, it's very nice. So any final thoughts on the episode? That hopefully now that we have the castle settled and we know how the map works, that maybe we can really move forward into how the season's going to play out. Because mm. the opener is almost like, okay, this is how things work. Now we have, okay, we finished decorating the secret base, so now it's time to get back to work, right? Or do we have more time to decorate the secret base? Can we have another pancake breakfast? I wouldn't have minded some of those pancakes. They look good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would have liked those pancakes myself. I love how Pinkie Pie just keeps stacking them up and... Spike is like, I, I almost missed it. I slept like a baby. And I like how he actually points out later, like, most people know how well babies sleep. I'm like, yeah, they don't sleep that often. Especially, you know, newborns. Mm hmm So that was a good save. Mm hmm Well, I liked the episode overall. It felt okay. 
I think my real problem with it was that it did feel like it was setting stuff up. It just didn't really have much to it. There was stuff going on, but all the stuff kind of felt like filler between the details in the episode. So you were sitting there going, okay, yeah, but it was enjoyable. It wasn't a terrible episode by any means. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 3. Castle Sweet Castle. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description. Yep, everything's being recorded. Not like it wasn't already. <laughs> Hello, NSA! <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Skittling daylights out of those poor people. Oh my god! They know! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Ha! Got me again! And I slowly made Kevin a whiny teenager. <laughs> the NSA isn't smart enough to employ teenagers. <laughs> and suddenly remembered teenagers from the Power Rangers movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Intro? Intro.